Hi everyone, thanks for watching today's video. As you know, in this season, I'm focusing on diseases of the gallbladder and today I'm going to talk about gallbladder cancer. Luckily, it's not a very common cancer. Over the years, I have seen maybe six to eight gallbladder cancers. And as I recall, except for one, the rest were all women. So it's far more common in women as compared to men. All the patients I've been involved with, one patient was quite young in her 30s, the rest were all over the age of 70, 75. So most patients will get this disease uh, or uncommon disease after the age of 70. So next thing to discuss is what are the risk factors that predispose us to developing gallbladder cancer. Nobody knows exactly what causes gallbladder cancer. However, most patients who develop gallbladder cancer usually have gallstones. Out of the patients I have seen, I cannot recall even one patient who did not have gallstones developing gallbladder cancer. However, thing to remember is gallstones are very common condition. And vast majority of these patients either will not get any symptoms and certainly will not develop gallbladder cancer. However, if you look at it reverse side of the coin, that patients who develop gallbladder cancer are more likely to have gallstones. So if somebody has got gallstone, they should not worry that they will develop gallbladder cancer. The second risk factor is gallbladder polyps. I've removed a few patients, gallbladders, who had polyps in their gallbladders. However, I cannot remember that any of them came back as cancerous polyps. However, if the polyp size increases in the gallbladder, say centimeter or two centimeter polyps, certainly many surgeons would like to remove those gallbladders because the risk of developing cancer in those polyps will probably increase. The third condition, porcelain gallbladder, which I've discussed briefly before, in my video on complications of gallstones, porcelain gallbladder basically means the gallbladder becomes like a rock. The whole wall is full of calcium like bone and it becomes very, very hard. And these gallbladders are at a high risk of developing gallbladder cancer. However, porcelain gallbladder is a very, very uncommon condition to get. What are the symptoms that patient present with to the doctor if they have underlying gallbladder cancer? And this is where it's important to understand why gallbladder cancer is such a serious condition. The reason is because early gallbladder cancer, when it is curable, is usually asymptomatic. They don't cause any symptoms. And the patient usually has no complaint. And by the time the patient starts getting problems from gallbladder cancer, it is far more advanced. And chances of cure becomes less and less. I'm not saying they're not curable. Some of them, however, the chance of cure become less and less. And the commonest symptom that I've seen in patients with gallbladder cancer was jaundice. The second commonest thing I've seen in patients who have gallbladder cancer is not listed on these because it's not a symptom. We had removed gallbladder for gallstones because they were getting problem with the gallstone. And when the gallbladder was checked under the microscope, Together with the gallstone, they also had underlying gallbladder cancer. So that was called an incidental finding, not definitely causing any symptoms from the cancer itself. The symptoms they were getting were from the gallstones, not from the cancer. Other symptoms are very nonspecific. So these symptoms can happen with many different conditions in the tummy and like abdominal pain, bloating, vomiting, weight loss, etc. can happen with many other different conditions. And hence diagnosing the gallbladder cancer on these symptoms alone can be very, very difficult and tricky. So what are the tests that can be done to diagnose gallbladder cancer? As I said in my previous slide that quite a few of the gallbladder cancer that we found were when the gallbladder was removed for different cause, usually gallstones. And when the gallbladder was checked under the microscope, as you know, every gallbladder that is removed is always checked under the microscope. And those patients, some of them were found to have gallbladder cancer. So that was just an incidental finding. These patients had tests before the operation to remove the gallbladder just to diagnose gallstones, which was usually the ultrasound scan. 
Other tests beside the ultrasound scan to diagnose gallbladder cancer would be CT scan, MRI scan, because these gallbladders look, look extremely thick. Um, they are usually stuck to surrounding liver and the bowel, etc. Technically, surgically, in my experience, these gallbladders are extremely difficult to remove surgically, especially with a keyhole operation because they are very tightly stuck to the liver and surrounding organs. Other tests performed to see how early, how advanced the cancer is, a keyhole operation called laparoscopy, and a PET scan just to see how far the gallbladder cancer has spread. PET scan, as you know from my previous video, stands for positron emission tomography. This is a scan not to diagnose gallbladder cancer, but to see how far it has spread. One more test that I had not mentioned earlier was ERCP, which is endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, which is a camera test done through the mouth into the small intestine and looking at the bile ducts and the pancreas and the liver, etc. by putting dye of the bile duct. Now, I've discussed this uh, test before as well in my previous videos to so do have a look at it. However, this is not a test to diagnose ERCP. Um, is not a test to diagnose gallbladder cancer, but it is a test to relieve the jaundice because the patients sometimes, as I said, can be very jaundiced to put a little stent into the bile duct to relieve the jaundice. And at that time, there will be a suspicion on this ERCP that the cause of jaundice is most likely to be gallbladder cancer, which is blocking the bile duct. So what is the treatment for this serious condition? If the cancer is early, then obviously surgery is the best treatment to remove the gallbladder. Most of these patients that they are diagnosed before the operation will have open operation with a cut on the tummy rather than with a keyhole because many surgeons would like to remove certain other organs or around the gallbladder like the lymph glands, sometimes part of the liver as well. And sometimes if the gallbladder is adherent or stuck to the bowel, etc., might require a much bigger operation than removing a gallbladder for just simple conditions like gallstones. Once the gallbladder is removed, many of these patients will require chemotherapy. Sometimes chemotherapy is given before surgery to shrink the cancer down, so surgery becomes a bit easier. But radiotherapy, which is x-ray treatment to where the gallbladder was removed from, it is done sometimes, but is not a very common mode of treatment. As many of these cancers are found when they are too far advanced and surgery is not always possible, in that case, the symptom relief is very important, like controlling their pain, controlling their jaundice by doing ERCP and putting a stent into the bile duct, sometimes a bypass operation to relieve the jaundice and relieve the vomiting, which might be caused because the gallbladder cancer is obstructing the bowel or the stomach or the bile ducts but mostly symptom control will be to control the nausea, vomiting, pain, weight loss, etc. I hope this video gave you some insight into what the gallbladder cancer is, how it presents and how it's treated. Thank you for watching my video again. And if you like to watch more, then please remember to subscribe and click the bell icon. And if you like, that will support our channel. Thanks for watching.